good evening, KU. I'm Denalyn Vasquez. And I'm Emma Noble. And we will be hosting today's news. Um, so, stop days this week. On Thank Thursday. goodness. Thank goodness. I've had enough. I've had enough. Yeah. I'm ready for stop day. I'm ready for no more homework. I really am. I keep thinking that stop day is going to be like the end of everything. But yeah. But that finals week is starting. Mm -hmm. But I'll just worry about that when my finals come up. I didn't even know stop day existed. I thought it was Me the either. same. And then my professors kept saying over and over again, stop day is coming up, make sure you have all your assignments in. Stop day is coming up, make yeah. sure you turn this in. And I was like, is that like it? Because I remember exactly. seeing the date, December right. 15th being the last day. Yeah, that's what I marked on my calendar. Like December 15th, I'm done. But now I'm thinking it's this Friday, but it's not. Yeah. It is well, not. for me, it's this Friday. Really? Because I don't have a lot of finals. You don't? I don't have like big finals except for like my poli sci class. Do Ooh. you have big finals? I don't. I have two finals and that's it. That yeah, is it. And too. one of them is a take home final, so. Oh, me too. Yeah. Oh, JMC 101? Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah, me too. We're both in We're the same class. We're both in the same class. Yeah, humongous so. class, 470 people lecture. Yep. Uh, Shout with, out Mr. Thomas. Yeah, Mr. Thomas and, and, and Jill. Jill, of course. Yep, we love him. Jill is so cool. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so what did you do this weekend? That is a great question. Oh, yeah. I did so much this weekend. Okay, I went to great. the basketball game. On yeah. Saturday, crazy. UConn? We have to talk about it. Okay, let's talk about it. Insane game. Okay. UConn was, they won a, the whole thing last year. Yeah. Huge. Great team. Like the championship? They won the championship. I thought we won the championship. We won it the year before. Oh. So we won it and then UConn won it. So that's why it was like a huge game because it was oh, back to back. Oh, no wonder. I Ex thought, yeah. Dude, tickets were like $50 on the story. Insane. Insane. Like, like people were going day. crazy to get tickets. And... Guess who was there? Who was there? Ted Lasso. No way. Ted Lasso was there. I did get a photo with him. I shook his hand and okay, I met wait. him. Who's Ted Lasso? I couldn't tell you. Okay. I could not tell you. All I know okay, is yeah, that man. he is the soccer coach for one team on Amazon Prime. And my, oh. my father is obsessed with the show. Okay, perfect. So, so a celeb on campus. Mm -hmm. I went up to him and I, I was like, Excuse me, Mr. Lasso, <laughs> can I please take a photo with you? What did he say? Was he nice? Yeah, he was so nice. Did he say, yeah, sure. Say yeah, okay. he was literally like, <clears throat> absolutely. Really? And then I said, my dad's such a big fan. And he goes, well, tell your dad I said hi. Were there other people that were trying to take a picture with him too? Or were you the only person that came up? There were other people, but there was like a line. And so oh. I would sneak in there when there was no line. And I would just, because I was sitting right by him. And I just Yay. snuck in, took a photo. And snuck in. Guess who else I saw? Who? Mark D'Amelio. No way. Yeah. No Son. way. Met him. Met no Mark D'Amelio. He <laughs> went to Connecticut. Oh. UConn. So he was that's so he why he was here. in Kansas. He was trying to seek out competition. Yeah, and it did not work because we beat them. Oh, we beat them. By how much? It was close. I think it was like, what, maybe like eight points, something like that. Four. Yeah, four it was four points. points. Oh. Yeah. Oh, so. so it was close. Very close game. Oh, but we won. But we won. Against the, against the national champions. Yes, the reigning national champions. We beat them. Yes. Wow. Yes, it was good. insane. KU's kind of good like that. Like We're pretty good like that. Rock chalk. Speaking about good like that. Yeah. Guaranteed Bright Bowl. Yes. We're in it. We're in. We're in. Guys, we're in. We're bowl eligible. Yes, we are. So what does that mean? So it basically just means that we're going to Arizona to play in a football we're game. We're going to Arizona. Are you going to go to Arizona? No. Are you? <sighs> no. I'm not. Yeah. It's like right before <clears throat> New Year's Eve, too. Oh, really? I think it might be Ooh. on New Year's Eve or something. I don't know when it is. Is but this the first time we're bowl eligible mm -mm. in a bit? Last year we were, too. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so. Coach Leipold. Dang, Coach Leipold. Coach Leipold has it. He's doing a good He's job. He's doing a great job. I know. It's just, we're winning. KU is winning. We're, we're Let's so talk about all good. the wins KU has. Okay, yeah. You go first. Okay, number one, let, we'll give pros and cons of why KU is the great school. No cons. No cons. Number one pro, campus. Yep. So good. Amazing. Number two, the people here. Are you kidding me? It doesn't get much better it, than this. You can't, you can't get anything better can't than this. Can't get anything this. better. Um, number three, the teachers here. Great. So chill. Could rave about them. Great teachers. Amazing. Rate my professor 10 out of 10. Rate my professor oh. is currently bookmarked on my Google, yeah. and I do go and rate them. It's coming them. up. It's coming up. <laughs> it it's coming time up, to rate. professors. So okay, your turn. My the environment. The environment's I mean, amazing. What more? Can, it's electric, some yeah. may say. What yeah. more can you ask for? I mean, our sport teams. 
Our sport teams are so good. The numbers speak for themselves, guys. Yeah. Like, actually. Like, bowl eligible. We went against yep. national champions. Yep. Um, so do you think we'll win the national champions this year? Yes. <laughs> I think so, too. Yes, you know, 100%. Yeah. Hunter Dickinson. Yes. He's going to take <laughs> us to the top. <laughs> oh, guys, we're going to win. Trust. Well, I think we should probably send it on over. Yeah, so after all this talking, I think... It's There's time. no other choice. Like, There's no other choice. It's time. And this is our last one. This is our last show, guys. This is the last Thank you good so evening, much. KU. So we yes. hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you guys next year. Now we're going to send it over to news and sports and weather after the break. <laughs> Welcome back, I'm Elena. And I'm Elena. This is your Tuesday Good Evening KU Update. The seven-day ceasefire in the Middle East has ended. After a time of peace and the exchange of hostages and the political prisoners, both Israel and Homs resumed fighting on Sunday with conflict in the Gaza Strip. According to, to BBC, more than 15,000 people have been killed in the past two months. Former U.S. Secretary of State Henry Kissinger died last week at the age of 100. Kissinger was born in Germany but was the voice of the nation during the 1970s under Presidents Nixon and Ford. Kissinger won the Nobel Peace Prize for his work during the end of the Vietnam War. After his pol political retirement, he stayed involved with various institutions and served as the Chancellor of at Ma William and Mary College. Former First Lady Rosalind Carter also died recently at the age of 96. Both she and former President Jimmy Carter, who were married for 75 years, have been living under hospice care. Carter supported the Equal Rights Amendment for women's rights and was, and was a groundbreaking supporter of treatment for mental health. President Carter said that his wife was also an equal partner in everything he ever accomplished. The Lawrence School District has only been using Gaggle as its threat dete detection system for the first few weeks. Just a but it kicked in on Friday in, at Free State High School. The system alerted administrators of potential threatening language in a student email, which led to an eight-minute lockdown at the high school. After a quick investigation, it was determined that the threat was unfounded and everything returned to normal. A post-Palestine group of students occupied Strong Hall one day last week to demand a statement from Chancellor Gerard. This was the second protest in weeks by students who also demanded change in how the university supports Israel. For additional information and the reaction to the protest, please visit Kansas.com. The gifts continue to roll in from KU alumni. Topeka native Brad Garlinghouse was the student body president when he was a student. Now, he is the donor of a $35 million gift to support the new Gateway District and upgrades to the football stadium. In the past, Garling House has supported many football programs, many programs, excuse me, across campus, including the KU Alumni Association and the School of Engineering. For more in sports, here are Caden and Garrett. Thanks, Melina. Kevin McCullough scored 21 points in the 69-65 Kansas victory over UConn. But the hero of the game was KJ Adams. Adams scored 18 points, including two free throws and four seconds, with four seconds to go to seal the victory. Adams dedicated the game to his mother who died last week. After the game, Coach Shelf got emotional when talking about how proud he was of Adams and what he was going through last week. Look guys, this game belonged to one person. This that dude right there. Can you imagine the stress he's been under and for him to play for you guys the way he did? tonight, knowing he's getting on a plane to go say goodbye tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. Wow. After the game, Adams flew home to Austin, Texas for his mother's funeral. Next up for the 7-1 Jayhawks is a home game tonight against Kansas City. Tip-off is at 7 p.m. in Allen Fieldhouse. 
Women's basketball team lost another close game to a top-ranked team yesterday, falling 63 to 52 at Texas A&M. The Jayhawks are now just four, three and four overall, but hope the tough competition will pay dividends down the road. KU will host Houston Christian on Wednesday and Allen Fieldhouse. Tip-off is at 6:30 p.m. The volleyball season ended on Friday with a tough five-set loss to Penn State. After losing the first and third sets, the Jayhawks dominated the Nittany Lions in the fourth set, setting up a do-or-die fifth set to 15 points. After holding an 11-9 lead, KU gave up two Penn State kills to tie the match, and after two more even exchanges, the Nittany Lions won the match 15-13 on a service ace. KU will finish the season with a 24-6 mark. The indoor track and field season began this weekend with the Bob Timmons Challenge. Multi-event athletes Lauren Heck and Alexander Jung won the pentathlon and heptathlon events and Ashton Bartle set a new PR in the pole vault, clearing 18 feet, one half inch. After winter break, KU will host the Kansas Triangular on January 12th. And yes, the football team now knows its final destination. KU will play UNLV in the Guaranteed Rate Bowl on December 26th. This will be the 14th bowl game for Kansas and a third meeting between the two schools, with a series tied at one win each. UNLV is 9-4, most recently losing to Boise State in the Mountain West Championship game. Kansas will play its bowl game without its now former offensive coordinator, Andy Kotelanicki, who took the same position at Penn State. That's it for sports. After the break, Brooke will be here with the weather. KU. I'm Brooke Renicky with your weather. Right here behind me is a shot of Fraser Hall as the sun was setting about an hour ago. You can still see those clear skies that we had for most if not all of the day. The temperatures were pretty mild but we are going to get an increase in temperature as this week goes on. Looking at the map of the U.S. today, we got some colder temperatures up north, but here in Kansas, we're still in the mid-range, about 40 degrees, not too extreme in either direction, so still pretty comfortable. But as we look at our map of Lawrence and the surrounding areas, Lawrence, Topeka, and Ottawa all at about 40 degrees. Leavenworth and KC at just a touch cooler, 38 and 39 degrees Celsius, but again, not too crazy. Sunset today was at 4.58 p.m. and we can expect a sunrise tomorrow at 7.25 a.m. So a little bit later than it has been, but still pretty early. And then as we go into tonight, 6 p.m., 40 degrees with a wind of 5 miles per hour from the north-northwest. By about 8 p.m., we're going to get down to 35. And 10 p.m., as you're leaving the basketball game, we're going to be right around freezing at 33 degrees. Um, and midnight, about 31. Not too many strong winds, about 3, 5 miles per hour with gusts at about 8 miles per hour max. And then as we go in tomorrow morning, 6 a.m., if you're up that early, it's going to be about 30 degrees with a 5 mile per hour wind from the south. 8 a.m. it's going to be right around freezing, but by about noon we're going to warm quickly up to 49 degrees. That's because of that south-southwest winds that's bringing warmer air, and we are going to have some stronger winds in the morning up to about 25 miles per hour in gusts. As we look at our extended forecast for the next week, tomorrow's looking pretty sunny with a high of 55 degrees. Thursday, we could be expecting some more wind with a high of 66 as those south winds push in that warmer air. Friday, Saturday, we have a chance of precipitation Friday night into Saturday. Most likely rain, however, it's uncertain yet if it's going to be rain or snow. 
Sunday, Monday, again sunny, and Tuesday is going to be partly cloudy, highs in the low to upper 40s and lows in the 20s all of those days. This is our last Good Evening KU on Tuesday nights of this year, so I want to wish you all best of luck on your finals. Happy holidays, and we'll see you in the new year.